uh, and with no ability to, uh, to uh, uh, affect, if you will, the effects of that, of that ruling means that it brings into question whether or not the city of Flint can indeed manage itself out of that uh, financial difficulty without the assistance of 436. The Transition Advisory Board will not be able to deal with the projected impact of those budget deficits that will accumulate if we are not allowed to get to that issue of the retiree health care. Now, this has all been discussed. This isn't the first time that this has come up. You all are aware of that. We've talked about it long before the ruling because when it first came up, uh, the retirees sought an injunction to prohibit it. Uh, so moving forward, for me at least, means we have to go down a path that, number one, respects the ruling of the court, but number two, puts in perspective the realities of whether or not the city of Flint will be able to manage itself out of the deficit given uh, the ruling that we're dealing with. That's germane because, as I said to the uh, council president and to my executive team, which consists of the finance director, Mr. Ambrose, the city attorney, uh, attorney Bade, the, uh, the mayor, uh, the director of planning and development, also uh, the coordinator of our master planning, uh, Megan Hunter, uh, Elizabeth Murphy, the uh, uh, assistant to the emergency manager, and Howard Croft, the director of public works. I introduce these people to you because they're going to be very instrumental in guiding that course given the new challenges that we, uh, we've just been, we've just been uh, given. And not only on the ruling, I mean, that's one issue. I think one of the things you heard from the auditors is that there are a myriad of issues that determine whether or not this financial solvency, which is the reason why I'm here, can be sustained over the long term. And so one of the things that I've done, as you've read, is to put together a blue ribbon team to look at governance, to look at that whole issue, to be able to put together a report on whether or not the probabilities for success in a post-436 or post-emergency manager environment has chances to succeed. Definitely the challenges by the, uh, uh, the court ruling have added a significant burden to that challenge. But we're going to continue to move in that direction. Our meeting is, uh, the first meeting is Thursday to begin examining those issues and to begin talking about um, those things that I think in the long run are going to be very critical to where Flint comes from. One of the things about the audit, which is why I wanted you all to not only participate in the, in, in the presentation, but to get a sense of the impact so that the public can also be aware of it as it relates to the options that may be available at some point should we not be given the opportunity to uh, affect any change in that, in, that, uh, in that area. And so another thing that has, has been important as we go forward is that I've had conversations with the president of the committee, I mean of the uh, council, about committees. I think the work of the committees has to be uh, guided so that as a team with the mayor, with the administration, and with the council that we're dealing with these issues so that everybody understands the gravity of what we're talking about. And I've asked the president to appoint uh, some committees, one of which is a public safety committee, which will give the new police chief a group relative to the council or involved with the council to look at the issues and help strategize and to talk about those strategies that may go forward to address the problems of public safety, police, fire, and uh, emergency response and, and, and communications. So I'll be asking uh, the council president to do that. The other issue that I think is important as we go down that track where we started at the beginning of the year is that we want to revisit some of those workshops so that we can talk about the issues, so that we can talk about finance, so that you understand when we go through an audit and take a look back, that has to be germane to what we plan and strategically design for the next budget year. Well, that plan and that effort just got a lot more challenging as a result of the act, I mean, the, uh, uh, the uh, appeal. And so we will be scheduling those workshops as we've talked. Uh, and I want to thank you all who signed up for the Michigan Municipal League workshop that uh, we will be 
making sure that you're able to attend as you begin your learning experiences. So there's a lot going on, and I reported back to uh, the state some 45 days ago. My 45-day report has now become a 90-day report. And so after this first quarter, I've had an opportunity to look at the issues and the challenges. And you heard tonight from the auditors, and I'll reiterate the point again, and that is that the cost containment measures and the strategies for uh, reducing expenditures are working. The difference in the expenditures and the revenue, uh, revenues uh, has resulted in reduction of the deficit. But that's not enough. We've got to find other ways to continue to reduce that deficit. And yes, we have to find ways to manage not only the budget, but to manage the, uh, the expenditure plan according to priorities. So we'll be looking to you as a council, working with the mayor and the administration, to put together that spending plan based on priorities of the master plan, other issues, uh, and, and some of the things that I think we saw over this past week would clearly illustrate that we are lacking in the financial and human resources to provide the level of service that a city this size needs. But that's the cards that we're dealt. Our plan for, for, for dealing with that is to take an orderly approach towards trying to manage this deficit. And we're only as good as that as we are as a team in terms of the council's involvement, in terms of the mayor's involvement, and in terms of the administration's involvement. And so as we go forward, we're going to be looking at those things. We're going to be talking about how we get better to managing those issues. Because this is a real challenge for the city. The word bankruptcy is not as far out of the lexicon now as it may have been before. The irony of the whole thing is that the reason why we're now beginning to wonder what that means in the law and what it means to the city is because the very reason that these steps were taken was to avoid having to strategize about what bankruptcy might mean. We're not there yet, but we have to take it under consideration because it is a part of Act 436 and it is something that we have to explore in terms of what that would mean. Not whether or not to do it, but what does it mean. And that discussion will not just take place in my <coughs> office or in the mayor's office. It'll take place uh, throughout the the group that I feel is going to be responsible for managing and at some point declaring whether or not uh, we can get out from under four, you can get out from under 436 based on an ability to sustain that. <coughs> Just briefly, the financial operating plan that I submitted to the state in November uh, requires an update to the third, or rather is the third update of the finance and operating plan which was put in place before my arrival and has served as the foundation of our work. Everything that we've done to this point to restore solvency has been based on that plan. According to Public Act 436, this plan is to have the objectives of assuring that the local government is able to provide or cause to be provided governmental services essential to the public health, safety, and welfare, and assuring that financial accountability of the local government is relatively sustainable. This document that I have submitted to the state is available for viewing on the City of Flint's website on the emergency <coughs> manager page under reports. And I encourage each of you to take a look at that. Uh, if we're going to have meaningful dialogue and discussion about the future of the city, uh, those kind of things should be second nature to you in terms of what's in them. If you've got questions about them, let me know. And between myself and my executive team, we can certainly answer the questions. But we have to start that dialogue, and that's where we have to start. Uh, I have outlined in my report the priority issues on which my team and I will be focusing. And those are, in general, stabilizing the financial future of the city, maintaining a balanced budget, seeking increased revenue, and reducing the unfunded liabilities for those things that uh, continue to, those obligations that continue to add up. We want to reestablish Flint as one of the safest cities in Michigan, both in reality and perception providing public safety services re focusing on reducing violent crime at a level commensurate with cities of comparable size and resources. We want to implement the blight elimination plan, manage demolitions, and enforce blight ordinances. We want to maintain access to a clean, sustainable water source, implement the steps necessary to participate in the Karagandhi Water Authority, including interim water supply plan development, 
disposition of current pipeline sections, city water treatment plant updates, and develop a long-term water supply backup plan. We want to complete a comprehensive water and sewer rate study, which is now about a week or two from receiving the first draft. This study is being done for the purpose of identifying the true cost of service for provision of water and sewer during the interim period of transition between Detroit water and sewerage and KWA service. This includes the period for which the water will be supplied by the Flint River, as well as looking at the capital costs for maintaining a water system. We want to implement the master plan of the city of Flint, updating the zoning ordinances, evaluating the capital investment needs, and incorporating master plan activities in the annual budget development, which was the reason why I reorganized the Department of Planning and Development and put that under Ms. Hunter's direction. We want to explore governance models for the city of Flint, establishing, as I've already done, a citizens committee to evaluate city governance models and recommend a course of action, possibly for charter amendment or any actions that will be necessary to, assure, uh, to reasonably assure uh, that the city will not uh, incur a third strike in its ability to manage its finances. According to PA 436, the next report to the governor and the Department of Treasury is due April the 8th of this year. The city also provides quarterly updates to Treasury. These reports are also posted on the City of Flint website. And so these documents and these actions pretty much provide the framework for our plan to continue moving Flint out of the deficit budget situation and establishing as much as we can a mechanism by which a structure can be pointed to to suggest that this is the structure by which the city will continue to manage. And as we look at a possible transition to a transition advisory board, having those things in place.